Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back to the garden. I'm hanging out outside here with our little baby bird friends, our little cardinal bird friends. Lots of stuff blooming, dahlias starting to bloom, really getting excited about that. But the main thing I wanted to talk about today, the focus of this video is going to be our zinnias. Uh, we're growing a lot of zinnias this year. Really wanted to show you guys which ones I'm growing, show you all the different uh, varieties that are in bloom now as well as just show you kind of our cut flower harvest that we have um, you know we've not been able to donate to nursing homes and stuff because of the you know what that I can't say or I'll get demonetized um, but we are able to give away these flowers today so I'm going to show you guys um, just what I'm picking what we've got going on this is over the course of two days is when I recorded this video so you'll notice a little bit change in lighting and change in the backgrounds and stuff like that but I am being rewarded currently with buckets and buckets full of beautiful zinnia flowers and I wanted to show you uh, some other odds and ends in there as well these are mostly all the zinnias that I'm growing there are a few that are excluded like the white zinnias and the mazurkia zinnias are not in this video. But getting right into this, starting off, we have these beautiful yellow zinnias. These are the Ben Aries Giant Golden Yellow Zinnia. You can see they are just nice and double. They are that rich yellow, the rich kind of buttery, bright, vibrant yellow. I also have Isabellina in my garden this year. It's not in this video, unfortunately. Hopefully I'll be able to show you guys that later. It's a very pale yellow. It's uh, really different. Um, but this yellow here is just very bright and vibrant and very much an attention getting flower in the cut flower patch. Um, they're a little bit difficult to work with in terms of cut flower arrangements, but um, it's just one of those things. Everybody has their own preference and everybody likes their own thing. So I, I really do like to plant just a wide variety because you'll never know what somebody might like or you know what your favorite will be. Moving on, I'm just going to pick some orange zinnia flowers next. These are the Ben Aries Giant Orange, obviously. Uh, most of the flowers that I am growing this year are the Ben Aries Giant series, uh, just because those seem like they are so much more reliable in terms of actual flower form than like the actual shape of the flower. They are usually very double, very fluffy, very big, just overall a better flower than some of the maybe more generic varieties or the more uh, common varieties that you see for a little bit of a cheaper price. Uh, the Ben Aries Giants can definitely run a little bit more on the pricey side in terms of seed cost. But you can really see why. I mean, these things are absolutely gorgeous. This is just, you know, early in the season since our planting. And we are already just getting tons and tons of flowers, which I am really enjoying picking. Uh, the next flower that I picked is the Floret Golden Hour Zinnia. This is one of the ones that I was super excited for. I was very excited for this zinnia. Uh, lots of beautiful pictures on the Floret website. Mine don't really look like the pictures. You can see mine have a lot of these kind of tinges of purple, which I think is really interesting. Flowers themselves kind of are this kind of golden yellowish peaches tone, and it's just got these hints of purple on the petals. I did notice that um, as the weather kind of cooled off, those hints of purple kind of seemed to go away. So I'm not sure if those kind of purple tinges are, you know, have anything to do with the weather. Maybe my garden is just a little hot, so maybe the plants are stressed out, more stressed than they would be if the weather was cool. Um, it would be interesting to see as our weather continues to change and I continue to cut these. It'll be interesting for me to see whether or not um, these kind of lose that purplish tint and kind of get just a golden hue. You can see some of them, like the one in front here, uh, just very glowy, I guess is a good word for it. I mean, overall, these are really, really lovely. I like the color of them. Um, they haven't been the greatest in terms of producing big double flowers. I mean, they're semi-double, I guess, but um, just really interesting to keep growing these and see what they offer by the end of the season, I think. See, they really do go well with a wide variety of the other colors, like the salmon and these together, I think, in a flower arrangement would be absolutely 
freaking gorgeous. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. So moving right along to our other zinnias in the garden, we have the Benares Giant Salmon. Um, Benares Giant Salmon is always one of my absolute favorites. You can get um, other generic Benares Giant, I mean, you can get other generic like Salmon Rose Zinnias. El Dorado is another Zinnia that's very close to this color, very pretty. Um, all just ranging in that kind of salmon peachy tone. Um, this is hands down one of my favorite colors. Um, I'm not even sure if the video does it justice. These things just seem to glow and look absolutely stunning. Uh, for whatever reason, my plants aren't really doing that great this year. I think I planted these in a spot that has a little too much sand, so I think that's the reason. Can I kind of lag in behind some of the other zinnias? But man, oh man, you really can just see and appreciate that peach kind of salmon-y tones. I tried to get footage of these um, both in the sun and in the shade so you can kind of see the variation in the colors. Because a lot, I mean, these flowers really do look quite different, can look drastically different from, you know, just being in the sunlight or being in the shade or indirect light, rather. These also tend to fade a little bit um, if you plant them in a spot with a lot of direct sunlight in the summer, it gets pretty hot, these can fade a little bit, but I think that kind of adds just a unique and interesting dimension to the flower that I really, really like. Uh, moving along here in the garden, we're taking a look further down our row of zinnias. We have the Benares Giant Deep Red. Now, uh, the Spinaries I had deep red, when they first open up, they are very, very much like a dark maroon color. They do lighten up considerably as the flowers age. You can see I have a bucket here. Um, various blooms, various ages. Uh, some of them are very, very double. Some of them are already opened up and producing pollen. Uh, I do like to just kind of wait to pick my flowers so I can, you know, have one big, huge picking, especially when they're getting donated have more kind of plant materials to work with but you can definitely see the range of color in these next to these we have our Benary's giant bright pink zinnia this is another one that is one of my absolute favorites uh, these blooms are always so big and they are so just bright pink obviously they are just this soft really really pretty bubblegum kind of pink color you can see the colors are fading a little bit, um, as I mentioned with other ones, just because it has been so hot. And some of the blooms are on the, a little bit on the older side, so we do get that kind of variation in color. But overall, the form of these is looking absolutely stunning, and I was so excited to pick a big handful of those. Next up, we have the Queen Lime Orange. This is one of the, I would consider, specialty zinnias that I have here growing in my yard. And these did not disappoint. Uh, look at the form on these. They are so double. They're, you know, the structure is beautiful. The color is absolutely gorgeous. You can see why these seeds cost a little bit more. A little bit more than you'd expect to spend on zinnia seeds. But this year I wanted to make the effort and make sure I was able to grow these. I grew a couple of other flowers in the Queen series. Um, they, they're doing okay, but the Queen Lime Orange here is by far doing the best. I think um, I planted them in part shade and they have really, really enjoyed that part shade location. I think it's really helping them develop just this beautiful color. Um, I can't believe I was able to pick just an entire bucket full of these and from one packet. Also, we have the Benary's Giant Coral. Uh, the coral, I planted these a little bit late, so they're kind of late to the game here, but they're looking very good, very similar to the kind of pink shades. A lot of these are very similar. These look absolutely beautiful when used in an arrangement with the Benary's Giant Salmon. You can tell they do have kind of a salmon colored tone to them, but they are quite a bit different when you see them next to each other in the garden. Uh, really just starting to get the blooms on these, so I'm eager to get full bloom on these and start picking these like crazy, and hopefully soon we'll have full buckets full of these things. I really like this color as well. Moving on, we have the Benary's Giant Purple. This is just regular old purple is what it's called. Um, you can see just a very clean, crisp purple, a little bit darker than the Benary's Giant Lilac, which we'll see here in a little bit. 
Um, these again were planted late, so they've got a late start. Hopefully, we'll get more blooms. Next up is the Benares Giant Queen Red Lime. Um, you can see lots of variation on these blooms. The older the bloom gets, you can see the bottom petals kind of start to fade, which I think is really cool. Kind of gives like an ombre type effect to our flower blooms. Um, these definitely look a lot different in the sunshine versus the shade. Um, that's something to consider. Sometimes in the shade, these can look almost kind of a dingy dark color, but in the sun, most of the time they look just a kind of vibrant pink reddish pink little bit of green mixed in it really is a very complex color to try to describe i know it's not everybody's cup of tea but personally i think it's really pretty i really like this one uh, i would definitely grow this again maybe next time i'll get more seed packets because this was only one seed packet um one of the most abundant flowers in my garden right now is the benares giant scarlet zinnia and these things are just they're growing like crazy and the flowers are huge. We have these big fluffy red double flowers. They are going absolutely bananas. And what's weird is I planted them in a spot that I thought they wouldn't do that great. Um, this is a spot in my yard with very heavy clay that doesn't drain very well. So I think that's interesting to note. I mean, it just goes to prove just how tough and resilient zinnias are. That's one of the reasons I love growing them so much is that they're not fussy. And even if you are a total beginner, you can grow some really great, really beautiful zinnias. Uh, we have the Benares Giant Lime also. Uh, lime is a little bit tricky. They don't really do as well for me for whatever reason. I try my best, but you can see the centers of those. They start to get dirty really soon. I think this is another one that I'm going to try again in the future and see if we can come up with something just a little bit better. See if we can get a better kind of crop cut flower crop of these i'm going to keep cutting these and hopefully they will start producing better um you know you win some you lose some benary's giant wine is also in the garden these have just started blooming only a few flowers so far but you can see much darker than the benary's purple just a dark rich color in person they look even darker than this um kind of shades of maroon and burgundy a little bit so we have the carmine rose benary's giant carmine rose that have just started blooming only a few of these in this video be sure to stay tuned for um, more updates about these that we're just now seeing florets unicorn mix uh, i've showed this in another video i am obsessed with the colors in this mix they are just so cool the colors in this mix remind me of like vintage wallpaper or something like 1930s wallpaper or like a 1930s quilt i just love the peaches and the lavender purple tones and even a little bit of those greens uh, very cool. So glad that I grabbed that unicorn mix. I grabbed it because I like the name and that was it. Like very, very cool. Really excited to grow this one again. I think next time she has a seed sale on her website, I'm going to grab like 10 packets of these. Maybe not 10. That would be way expensive. I can't afford that. Um, I'll grab like three packets of these um, and grow these out. Just such a cool assortment of colors in this one. Love the kind of vintage vibe from it. I uh, haven't used many in flower arrangements yet, but very cool. Uh, I also wanted to mention the Scabiosa Mixed Zinnias. Scabiosa Mixed, they're always a disappointment here. Uh, here's the mix. You can see none of the flowers have that Scabiosa pattern that we want. Um, there's different theories regarding why this happens. You know, sometimes it has to do with the weather. My own personal experience hasn't really matched that. Uh, it seems like every time I plant these somewhere that gets a lot of shade, I come up with single blooms and no scabiosa flowered zinnias. Uh, next year, I'm going to try to plant them in the sun, see if we can get something different. But overall, I just really wanted to show you guys the abundance of zinnias that I was able to pick from our little tiny backyard. I mean, if you're new to the channel, my backyard's about 30 feet by 35 feet is the size of my garden. And this was just over the course of a couple days, we were able to pick all of these flowers, especially all of these zinnias. I mean, just piles of them, armloads of them. I admit, I like to pile them up because it makes me feel like, wow, that's a lot. You know, like I'm really producing like a real cut flower farm, even though we know I'm not. Um, in addition, we also had a lot of Rudbeckia, you'll see, and we had some 
ageratum, we had some basil, we had just buckets and buckets. The first buckets went off uh, the first day and then the next day I picked even more buckets and they went off. Uh, so all these flowers, I'm happy to say, found a very good home, which, you know, just makes me feel good, of course. And um, hopefully soon we'll start having things like sunflowers starting to bloom and we have some gonfrina on the way. Just a lot of stuff that we have to look forward to. I uh, really love just picking flowers and uh, hopefully we can keep on harvesting our zinnias as long as they stay healthy and we keep deadheading them. Um, I'm thinking about doing a zinnia FAQ, like frequently asked questions. So if you have any questions about zinnias, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to try to answer those. Maybe I uh, will make a video about it since I do grow so many zinnias here and I do get a lot of questions about them. I'd be more than happy to try to answer those in a video if you're interested. Um, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Love to have you. We're always trying to, you know, make new content about cut flowers and sometimes it's growing vegetables or DIY projects. It really is a surprise. You never quite know what we're going to upload here on the channel, you know, just trying to grow our little gardening community and keep growing our zinnias and all that good stuff. I've been trying to videotape hummingbirds eating out of the zinnias. Um, it's like they know what I'm doing. They don't trust me. Either way, we've had a lot of pollinators, lots of different little moths and things, which is always exciting. And the first butterflies have also started to arrive. So very, very um, excited about that. Here's a look at those those Rudbeckia I was telling you guys about. This is the Sahara Rudbeckia. This is Rudbeckia hirta. I know this doesn't really have to do with zinnias, but you know, I did want to show you because this video came about because I made a large cut flower harvest and I was able to get two buckets of our Rudbeckia, our Sahara Rudbeckia. There's very pretty colors, tones of kind of peachy yellows and reds and very fall, very much fall colors, which I'm surprised that they bloom in the middle of the summer, but hopefully they will keep blooming all the way into the fall and we'll have some sunflowers with these and I think that would be absolutely awesome. That's really about it for this video. Sorry I kept on rambling. I just wanted to show you some of these awesome zinnias. I hope that you guys are having an incredible day. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, tell a friend. Uh, be sure to leave me a comment because that helps with engagement. And check out all my links below and find us on Patreon. Bye guys!